So here's a bit, a bit, a bit of an agenda about what we're, we're going to cover. Uh, I'm going to go through an introduction. I think I've already done that. I'm going to talk briefly about the challenges that some of our customers face today uh, in supply management. I'm going to talk about the design philosophies that we that we that, that we've implemented to to relate to some of those challenges. And at the end, uh, I'll have a dedicated Q and A session uh, to answer some of your questions. Okay, so let's start off. Um, let's talk about some of the main supplier management challenges. Um, again, we, we, we have a few customers of, of Intellex who do use our supply management uh, applications. And uh, a lot of these solutions are really designed around the difficulties that they face. And um, it's, it's true that a lot of the feedback that we get is from this customer basis as well. But uh, we also get feedback for our design from, uh, from other sources like industry analysts, uh, some of our prospects and some of our partners and so on. So one of the, 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 one of the, the main, main challenges and the first one I want to bring up here is uh, the corporate structure. So I'll, I'll talk about this in a second. Um, in, in, uh, in the past, the corporate structure of a supplier relationship was quite simple. As in, there was you, um, a consumer, and there was a supplier. And essentially, the, uh, the equation was very simple. You basically give the supplier money, and they give you product. Um, however, the, these days, uh, supplier management is a little more complicated because um, the corporate structures have changed and corporate structures themselves have become uh, pretty, pretty complicated. So if you look at the same scenario today, uh, you sitting in the US, for example, would buy a product from a company in, let's say, Switzerland. So you'll actually pay the company in Switzerland and they would then ship you product, but it's not really from the same site. It's probably from a factory somewhere in China or, or Asia. So as you can see, you know, what, what used to be a very simple supply chain in the past has now, has now increased in complexity. So now you're not really worried about, about the, 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 the facility that is coming from, but also the parent company and any holding companies above it as well. So one of the major difficulties of our customers is, is how, do, how do you handle this kind of, um, this kind of change in, in co corporate structure? So when we designed our solutions, we really designed a multi-tiered system of ownership in the sense that you can have a supplier parent company that has multiple what we call satellite facilities. And, and, and in fact, that supplier parent company can have another parent company. So it's a, it's a relationship of really depth, uh, depth N is what we call it. Um, and it's essentially, you're, you're able to view supplier facilities as in factories or warehouses uh, and so on uh, as a part of a supplier parent company. At the end of the day, you may be interested in only the certifications and the, the documents uh, and then really the performance of these supplier facilities um, in, in terms of quality and sustainability. But you will also be interested in evaluating the supplier parent company based on things like financials, uh, liability insurance, and so on. So what we've done is we've really broken down the structure in a more understandable way that uh, you, know, you, you, you can attach the requirements of, uh, to a supplier facility, which could be different from requirements that you attach to a supplier parent company. So that was the first, the first uh, the difficulty that, that, that we found and you know, we have addressed it by, by arranging our data model in, in an appropriate way. So, so similar to that, uh, what you could do is in your own organization, you could create a, a relationship model or structure that really uh, understands the, the parent-child relationship of a, of a supplier, the head office, and their, and their facilities. The, the, the second challenge that we come across has to do around requirements. So as a supplier, uh, most of the, re the, the requirements have to do with compliance. So let's th th so we, we can th think about compliance in terms of quality. So you can think about ISO 9001 certification, or you can think about uh, about compliance for for kosher related products, halal products, uh, HACCP certified products, um, and if you're in the aviation sector, um, you, you 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 talk about AS 9100 as a quality standard. But um, it's not just compliance that we are we're worried about. So so today. Our, our supply chain and the way we 
assess a way we 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 really evaluate the the performance of a supply chain is not only by compliance but it's also by stewardship uh and stewardship we, we don't like to use this word anymore because it's it's kind of dated in the industry uh what we we really mean by stewardship is sustainability so you would like to to you would like to require your your suppliers to be compliant with quality standards and safety standards but you will also like them to be compliant with sustainability standards like fair trade or or conflict free minerals and and stones etc um fair labor association and um and things like reach so so we we find that today a lot of our our, our customers have difficulties with with really keeping track of all the various certifications that they themselves require their their suppliers to have and i'll talk about a solution to this in a little bit but i just want to make you aware that this is not just a problem in your organization but it's it's a quite a pervasive problem as well